stand for the pledge. Let's have a moment of silence for our military and first responders. Okay, welcome everybody. Um, welcome to the Town Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Uh, we are going to, how many do we have? Three, four? Four. Four, four tonight. Um, should we start with continued public ones? Is that what we usually do? Okay. All right, we're gonna start with a uh, continued hearing from last month. Um, we'll call up, uh, the professional engineering group was here to anybody, or maybe we'll put them on the background. I think they're coming Actually. in right now. All right. People sign in for us. There's a okay. signage. Do you want to? Why don't we skip over? We'll we'll start with the next new public hearing. Does that sound good? Sure. sure. All right. Scott Hill, owner of property at 4220 County Road 16, requesting a 40 foot variance. Area variance from front property line and relief from chapter 20. Okay, so, so is that Scott? Scott, are you here? Is the owner of 4220 County Road 16 here or anybody on their behalf? All right, we're off to a great Rockwell, start. Rockwell, sir. Rockwell, you're here for Scott, all right? We're there. Are you here for Scott? Yeah, we're right here. All right. We're after you, though. No, shop, shop. we can go. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. We thought we were after. Uh, well, I pushed pushed you guys ahead because everybody was walking in all the same time. So, so go ahead, Rocco. Okay. So good evening, everybody. Um, this is a project for Mr. Hill here. Um, he's right here behind me in the shorts. So casual there. And what Scott owns a property that has land on either side of Westlake Road, uh, out on the east side of the road. He wants to build this garage, basically a three car garage on the west side of the road. The west side is a, well, let me, before I even get into that, um, this project was presented to the town in 2007. Mm -hmm. And we did get a variance, but we never built it. So we're back here again asking for it again. Uh, and it was a unanimous vote at the time. So um, not to put any pressure on you folks. But. So uh, Aaron designed it. It's pretty much cut and dry. It's, uh, you know, we're asking for 20 feet from the front setback instead of 60. Uh, we don't need any other variances. It fits in there fairly nicely. If we were to try to build it elsewhere, like go up on the hill, it would do so much damage. We'd have to build the driveway up there. And, you know, so I think it tucks in nicely. I think it works for Scott. Everything's directly across from his house. Um, that's pretty much it. Any questions, either one of us can answer. What's the difference between this variance application and the one that was approved? It's totally the same. It's the same, same project. The limits of disturbance are minimal. Okay, so it's it's literally the same variance request that you had before. We had a permit to have a. We never we never got the permit and built the project, and now we want to go forward and build the project. So right. that's why we're here tonight. Do we have? I have a question. Sure. Go ahead. Chris said, um, Chris Jensen. Did they include the portion of the lot as the total lot area? Did you know? The area of 0.633 that we showed on the map is the entire parcel from the lake to the upside, to the west, west property line. Yeah, my, my question was, did you include the portion that's actually owned by the Office of General Services, the actual lake? 
because I see that the estimate. There's, there's an area. I think what Chris is talking about is right here. Is that correct? Is that what you're talking about, Chris? Oh, no, I can't see. There you go. That area, he actually has a patent on that, so he owns that. Okay. So he, he has a patent on this area here. So that's actually his, even though it's under the water, he owns it. I, I would have to see that because the Office of General Services owns below the mean high water mark in New York State. But, but he has a patent for that. I'm saying, could you please provide that patent? Oh, we have it somewhere, yeah. It's in the deep. It's, it's, it's in the deep. We have it, yeah. Chris, what is that relative to? Is that the lot coverage that you're asking that? Just, I don't think they're close to lot coverage or building coverage, whether they need a variance or not. I was just wondering if they did include that portion of the lake as part of their we lot. Did. We did because it is part of the lot. Only, only you're correct. It's just in this instance, we do have a pattern, so. Uh, let's see. Any, any guys, you guys got any questions for the- I have more technical type questions. Okay. Um, and Chris, you can hear us okay and you're on with us, right? Yep, I can hear you crystal clear. Okay, um, so Racco, you mentioned a 20 foot variance, but it, it appears to me, and it's a forty-foot variance. Forty-foot variance, right? Well, I guess what I tried to say was, it's we need, it's we're going to be twenty feet instead of sixty, making it a forty-foot request. So, yeah. And I'm not, I'm not quite certain of this, but this is a forty-foot area variance. But we're not really looking for a area variance. Are we? Yes, we're looking we are. for a setback, aren't we? No, we're looking a setback is under an area variance. Same. So. so so there, a garage is or a building has to be uh, 60 feet from the property line as the front setback, and yes. they're looking for 20 feet. So they're looking for a 40 foot front setback area variance. Okay, and then the other question I have is the way this is written in our agenda, it says that they're requesting a 40 foot area variance from the property line. I understand that, but then it says from chapter 2020, or excuse me, 220 8, steep slope protection, which prohibits accessory structures that would require greater than 4,000 square feet of land disturbance. So is that in there because that's an issue or a concern, Chris? That, that is a second variance that they're asking for. So when they adopted the steep slope rules, they said you couldn't disturb more than 4,000 square feet for creation of an accessory structure. Uh, this is right over that limit. So there are two variance requests then? Yes, right. there are. And when you say, and I guess, Rock, well, I'll pose this to you, I guess. When, when Chris just said it was just over relative to the steep slope protection. I, I, I don't have any calculation. I didn't do the calculation. I can do the calculation, but I don't have it. Of what we're at, what we're asking for. I know we're over. There is 7700. 7700 square feet of disturbance? We're almost twice, yeah. Right. Yep. The limit of work. And, and just to, to say something, if they pushed it back like into the hill, they'd be doing more disturbance and but changing the other setback. So I guess it's kind of a balance act here. And, and just to clarify with the board, the structure itself is less than 4,000. The reason we went to 7,700 is because we've got that creating to blend it in. Yep. That, that, you know. Shall I keep going? Yeah, if you, well, because I'm just going to open it up to the audience. Please, John, stop asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> Might be helping you. No, right right ahead. Ahead. That's where my phone number under. So <laughs> are there any other buildings in the vicinity that are that close to the road on that side of yeah, the street? Yeah, there are a few. I know one uh, right down south of German Brothers or yeah. one. Yeah. And that's a similar situation. They dug into the hill. And that's a garage there also, yeah, I think, yeah, right? Yeah. 
to grass. This one just sells those well, like the road. Yeah, I can think of four or five, but that's the one that most resembles what we're going to be doing. Okay. Is the, is the other driveway going to go away? Um, we'd like to keep it, and we're showing it being kept. But if it's an issue, we'll get rid of it. You know. It would be an additional variance for two driveways. Yeah. What driveway is that? Is it even shown on this drawing? Yeah, it's, at the top. it's shown on the drawing up here. And if right now you just access that shed, but what, what, what's in the shed can go in the garage. So, you know. And then I got a couple of other questions that I'm, I'm wondering whether they even fall. When you're on a town board, you're going to be off this board. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that'd be a good thing for you or a bad thing. It's for a you. new development. It might be good. Yeah. Um, are we cutting down any trees? Or? We are cutting down two trees out front. Uh, just a couple uh, a couple more ash trees. I'm not sure dying anyway. So okay. The one on the, right on the lake. Right on the bank, right we got to take down a couple. My other concern, Rocco, and I'm not, again, maybe this is a planning board's purview, is when you have a piece of equipment in there and you're digging out this hill. We're going to be on the road. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and establish this water control. We're going to put this little swale in, this little catch basin down in here. And then we're going to excavate this out. And then the excavator will set here. The trucks will sit, sit on, a, on, on the toe of this. You know, on the yep. edge of the road, okay. on the shoulder, and he'll load them so we won't be spinning around on the, on the property. We're basically working off the road. Yeah, that's what it looked like to me. Yeah. Um, do we need a flagman or do we need to take I think the contractor would be responsible for a flagman if it's necessary. I okay. think it would probably be prudent to have them out there. Maybe with the heavy machines in it, right? I think when the excavator's there, yeah. there should be a flagman because because there's not a big, there's a little bit of a shoulder, but not a huge shoulder. So I think the truck will be partly in the highway. Okay. So, I mean, if you want to make that a condition, but I would think that's really up to the planning board to the, to the contractor. Yeah. And yeah, before, before we issue a permit, I'll require that they have a highway permit from the county. Okay, good. And then the county would address that. Okay. Chris, when did they change the code for the steep slope? It obviously wasn't. It's 2014. The last variance was. You know, I said 2007, but I was probably. It was 2014. And obviously, there was no steep slope right. issues then. I think what we've done with this plan this is back muted. I think is probably trying to mediate that and try to do the best we can without disturbing the slopes. Chris, are you there? Chris Nadler is saying something. I am here, but I'm trying to look up the code. Oh, okay. I'll give me time. Uh, I would defer to Chris Jensen on the code. So going back to the application that was approved, what was the uh, resolution with the two driveways back then? Were they never really mentioned it. It, wasn't yeah, really, it didn't appear to be an issue at the time. Driveway stayed at the Yeah. Local law of 2017. Yeah. Anybody else have any? Chris Jensen? Chris Jensen? You got Terry to answer on your question. Yeah, right. I can, I can hear you. Is um should there be some notations on the drawing relative to traffic control and pedestrian control with that work taking place as close to the road as it is? And is that something that should be addressed in this form or is that something that should be addressed like the planning board or the highway? Plan? So the, the county has specific details. They have a whole booklet of how you do flagging on a county road and if you're okay, good. blocking a certain amount of the road and everything like that. So they're going to have to abide by their county permit. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure that that was covered somewhere. That's all. Uh, Chris, do you have any other comments or recommendations? No, I mean, based on how they're tucking the garage into the hill, they either increase disturbance or increase the amount of variance they need. So it's, it's just that balancing act kind of thing. 
Thank you. Okay. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Um, hi, I'm Ally Rudolph. I'm on the ECB. Um, you can go right up to the podium and we'll talk so everybody can hear. <laughs> I just was wondering, um, the ECB had a few comments that we forwarded, and we were just wondering if you were planning to keep the trees on the southern end of the property. And we're, we're, we're only going to cut what's absolutely necessary. But if you'll notice on the grading plan, that area with the heavy lines. Yeah. So just those, we'll keep those, try to keep them. I think most of the trees on that bank are going to go because we have to slope it back and blend the slope. So what? Um, Thanks. Oh, one second. So what we usually do is you have you address us as the board, and so we're not having the back and forth. I know it's a yeah. You know, a and then the other question. question was just simply um, the steepest part of the slope is the front where they're cutting in for the driveway and taking out those two ash trees. So we're just wondering what they're planning to do to mitigate the uh, like the runoff, the runoff on the steep slope area. So, all right. But other than that, it's a nice flat area where they're already parking in. Anyway, so. Okay. So, so to help with that, okay. the back of the garage, when we build it, will mm -hmm. actually be a fortified wall heavily with, with rebar. The back side of it and the side will be filled to the top with stone. So it'll act as a cap, and then that stone will go into the catch basin out the road. So it'll be filled with stone, like as in loose stone, or is it like a number two wash? Okay. About that okay. big around. I wasn't sure if you were saying a rock. What'll happen is the water will come off the hill instead of going to the ditch, which it does now, it will right. go into our gravel bed. See through that and down into the roadside. So, actually, it's going to improve the situation. Okay. Do we have any letters from the neighbors? Did we get anything? They've offered. I didn't think that was necessary. Um, we usually like to see letters. I'll from... get letters, but they've been very gracious. And, they, and I got letters from the two neighbors at the last time I was there. Are they on there? Chip, chip sailors are. You know, in response to that, Kelly, I, I don't see where this really impacts the neighbors. Though. I know. I, I mean, just asked because you know, we no runoff know. going towards their property. There's. I don't see. Anything. Yeah, I, don't see anything really really low low. I think it's a very low impact. You know, right. even from the lake, you can't see it from the lake, but. It's going to be shrouded by the house, and yeah. there's a huge tree alongside the house. So I, I think it's going to be hard to detect it from the lake unless you sit out in the middle of the lake with an ocker. Yeah. Rather than put it higher up on the hill, which it would be seen. I, I, well, that's what Chris was saying. It's a balancing act, right? Yeah. All right. You guys, you guys good with this? Everybody? Okay. All right. I think we're good. So we'll, uh, you know, we'll have deliberations at the end of the, at the, at end, the end of the end meeting. Of the meeting. Okay. Yeah. If you want to stick around, you can. Um, no, but typically, we vote on the same we night. We trust so. you can handle it. Out. Yeah, we'll right. We can't say anything. We will. We are you comfortable any closing? Is what I am comfortable closing. Okay. So what we'll do is we will, you know, at the end of the meeting, you're welcome to stay, and if not, somebody will take out. my mess with you. Yeah, <laughs> take your mess with you. My wife forced me to take it. I said, no, they got it on the screen. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Thank Have you. Good night. Thank, Have you. Good night. Thank you, guys. Good to you. Good luck. All right. So we can go back to the continued public hearing uh, for the, what is it, 5272 Menteith Drive. Um, Professional engineering group, Scott Harder and team, I guess, right? Yeah, we got the whole team. Did you get your phone from last time? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get your attention, but. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Betsy Brock with Woods Oviat Gilman. Um, we are here again. Uh, we were here uh, for last meeting. The whole team is here. Scott Harder is here. I Andrew Murphy, our landscape architect, is here. And uh, Susan from Peter Shotland, uh, the property owners, are here. So uh, we've got the whole team here to answer questions. Uh, if you remember last time we were here, you had a bunch of questions for us that we did not quite have answers to. Um, I'm going to distill it down to like the couple issues, uh, the placement of the house, 
the step back from the creek, why we need that step back variance, uh, and what it means in respect to the drainage uh, flooding considerations and the removal of trees. So that is, I think, what encapsulates things right. in a nutshell. How the water was going to run off. Which way, right. So um, well, this is like stats really to cover, but um, you know they have. Um, I think at the end of the day, I think what we're prepared to show you is that the location of the house is actually the optimal location uh, for drainage purposes. Um, and the Shotlands, who are very good neighbors and have talked to all their neighbors, um, are committed to saving as many trees as they can. Um, they can talk a little bit more about uh, conversations with one of the neighbors here tonight. Um, they did have letters of support from all of their immediate neighbors mm -hmm. on the teeth. I think they those. were sent in. Yep, you got, got them. Yep. Um, if not, I have additional copies. Uh, so I think we did quite a bit of work. Um, Andrew's here to talk about the trees and what we can save as far as trees. I can say that moving the house any further from the creek does not save more trees and it is detrimental from a drainage perspective. Um, that's kind of like the summary, but I will Great. the water runs. Thank you. Hello, everyone. How are you? I have some paper copies of the correspondence from the neighbors if you'd like to take a look at it. Sure. Yeah, that's okay. fine. I made up the copies, so I might as well share them. I wasn't, we weren't sure if we'd get the email in time. Yeah, appreciate um, it. Thanks, sir. Since we last met, the question came up about the location of the house with respect to an overflow condition that has happened in the past. And in response to that, you folks indicated that you um, have conferred with uh, Kevin O'Vaney regarding items like this. And so I contacted Kevin O'Vaney I redid the rating plan in conjunction with our conversations um, to preserve um, the what we call the riparian area or the overflow route that goes kind of diagonally through the property. If um, is it possible to put our plan up on the screen? It should be able to. There was a lot of documents, so I wasn't sure which one. Yeah. The um, I, I guess the, the best if we could do sheet one first. And then sheet two after that. So, um, site survey plan existing conditions. And yes, you could rotate that. I had my handy dandy laser to ah, help point things out a little bit. Oh, no, it's cool. Can you blow that up a little bit too? Depends how much of it you want to see. It's a little bit off pretty quickly. Yeah, it's not that. So, the the overflow route is where my red laser is going. Existing, correct? Is existing, correct. Okay. It does that. And so in meeting with Kevin in the field with Shauna, he identified, we identified, this is the uh, riparian corridor, I think was the terminology. Okay. Um, so now if we go to sheet two, That's site utility and grading plan proposed to a file. It's just hard to read across the room. <laughs> no, that's, that's okay. So this is the this is the proposed conditions, and we showed flow arrows uh, to assist, um, but the route is still preserved and maintained. The orientation of the house. There was a question as to rotation of the house. Mm -hmm. it, it, would rotating make it better? And the way it's kind of laid out, the way to think of it, at least how I think of it, is this is kind of the rotation point or the pivot point or the pinch point, if you will. And if we were to rotate it, we would introduce more water over in this area as that house rotates because basically it deflects the, the drainage coming across there. So the, the house in that location and the house in the elevated condition serves to protect the houses over here. And I believe there was a question regarding that and a desire by the board to do just exactly that. Um, when I spoke with Kevin, after we spoke, I sent this drawing to him to confirm that we were on the same page in terms of what we were trying to achieve in this exercise. Um, the house position stayed the same, but I reworked the proposed grades to uh, achieve what you see here is generally identified with the flow arrows. 
with respect to removal of trees, um, we had a discussion this morning with Sarah Linda Hooker, who's here, and she has sent you a letter, and I'm sure she'll speak tonight as well. Um, the, the Shotlands want to preserve trees. I like trees. I want to preserve trees. Um, but if you take a look at the current development regulations in the town of Canandaigua with respect to wastewater systems, that right there, um, stormwater treatment systems, that right there, elevating a house to a safe elevation relative to the predicted water surface elevations. By the time you put all these factors together, including utilities and whatnot, there's no way that you can't affect the trees. We're trying to do it in a minimal way. That's why we have a landscape architect working with us who will speak after me to tell you what he's done and some changes that we're proposing based on our meeting with Sarah Linda this morning. Um, I believe the owners are sensitive to tree removal. Um, we have black walnuts out there. They're, according to my forester, considered to be a, a dirty tree and not really that nice a tree to have. But if it helps, the, if it helps to maintain some <clears throat> woods appearance more so than if they were removed, then I think the shotlands are willing to reconsider removal of some of those trees. Um, with respect to drainage. Um, um, I took your comments seriously. I went to Kevin Mulvaney, who I've known for many years, and, and spoke with him, put together our information from the field visit um, into a, a design that we think, that I believe, that I will sign off on, achieves the goal that you folks spoke about last time. Did you receive anything from Kevin? Do you know? Didn't receive any comments from him, I guess. No, there was just there was an email from Kevin, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, there was an email from Kevin. Was there? Okay. Mm -hmm. Did it say anything? Uh, it was kind of brief. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Um, is it before? Is yeah. this back? Okay. Yeah, Bet Betsy just gave it to me. It, it's um, dated July 11th. Okay. Uh, I'm away this week, but checking email pretty regularly. I think the concept as shown in the plans is basically what we talked about in the field. It would be important for the applicant's engineer to state this is the proper way to convey and mitigate flood flows, okay? I think I've done that. In addition, there should be something in writing provided by the adjacent and same landowner that they understand and agree with the approach being used to convey and mitigate flood flows. It would be important to have that in the property file for future landowners. The, the recipient of the drainage from the grading is, is the Shotland family. Um, based, based on the flow arrows here, the, the drainage is, is reflected and directed onto the vacant parcel and partially onto this parcel just to the south of it. Um, so I, I think they could provide that information and provide that statement. Yes. Mind if I ask a question? Or I was just going to make a statement. Go right ahead. Uh, Scott, I took the liberty of driving back in there today. Okay. Uh, and simply because I believe it wasn't so long ago that we had the property to the southeast right. come before us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that the neighboring property, the adjacent property? I can't tell from no, the um and, and I don't know, did the aerial photographs that I sent, Shauna, did they come in today? I created two aerials um, to help show. And my question and my point, I guess, is that that came before us and I just looked at it today and it appears to me that that property did almost the same thing that you're doing, you're proposing to do right now, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, this, is, this is Chris speaking for a second. Yeah, that, that property did get multiple variances from setback from lake, setback from stream, and all that stuff. Uh, some of it was the pre existing non conforming setbacks. The, the only comment I have on this project is we, we know it's going to flood, we know that there's going to be ice jams and stuff like that. As long as the applicant puts something on the, the, the site plan 
so that in the future, when the next person says, oh, I want to hard armor in the stream or put concrete walls in the stream to stop the flooding and everything, we can go back and say, this. they asked for a bunch of variances, and we, we, we're not going to allow hard armoring of a natural stream and stuff that they built it and they understand there's going to be flooding. I had sent a, a note previously stating there should be something that says that the property is historically been flooded, damaged by ice jams, shale deposits, and streams spreading blind its floodway, that the owner is aware of historical flooding and associated possibility of damage and holds harmless the town and the engineer free from responsibility if and when the plans are approved and signed. Just because we, we know it's going to flood, it's just that I don't want in five years from now, if another person buys it, like they do next to Ananda saying, we need to hard armor the stream. The town needs to go in and clean out the stream and stuff like that. So that's just, we can make our approvals if we approve this contingent on you putting a note that the owner is accepting of the existing flooding conditions. So I don't see, to finish my point, mm -hmm. um, the property that I looked at today is the one that I can't read the lettering, but it's right there, yes. In the 65. That's right. And, the, and a property that you're proposing to do this to is right, right there. there. Yeah. And that property to the southeast basically has a stream condition or an adjacent to the stream condition, almost identical to what I assume you're proposing. Um, so I thought they did a good job with it. And I assume that uh, you folks are gonna do a similar a good job and you've addressed my concerns as far as the, um, can you show me a little bit more, Scott, though, where that water goes on this and the same thing. So the, the repairing area? Yeah, right, well, yeah. It's right there, but now the water flows. Right right now it's like, it's like, it's like this. So yeah. is there something that already directs it that way? And yes, like, if, what's... if you look at our existing conditions, our existing contours show the show Does the it? Because yes. I didn't see, okay. It does. Mm. So um, the majority of the area that is where the water runoff is going is part of this property also? Yes. Well, it, it's owned by the, Family. It's, it looks like it's part of this lot. Right. Well, there's, this is actually kind of a, a fly lot, um, if you will. It has a stem yeah. or a fly pole that comes down to the water. Uh -huh. so that's part of us. Why it's that shape, I'm not quite sure. Um, but this property is part of the Shotland family, as well as this one here, too. Didn't we subdivide that or something? There was like a lot. Adjustment or something like that many years ago. Yeah. We there was a lot of adjustment up. Was it over there? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's what I was thinking. So yes, under ex existing conditions, uh, most of it is traveling around in, in this area. Mm -hmm. If it were to jump this area as it did once upon a time, I'm also speaking with Kevin. You know, he mentioned that you know what I think is obvious to all of us. Um, you know, the unpredictability of a mm -hmm. of a creek like this. Um, we as engineers work with 100 year storms, 50 year storms, 10 year storms under typically steady state conditions. But we don't have a software program that models ice jams, log jams, or things like that. So we're, we're once again doing our due diligence, I think, in, in, in preparing for a repeat event here. But at the end of the day, we don't control it. I can uh, speak to if people in the audience aren't aware. When variances are granted, they're not granted to individuals, but they're to the parcel. So if there was a transfer at a later time, then uh, whatever is decided today, that becomes uh, you know, uh, part of what's... So we need to make sure that uh, everything is in writing and, and buttoned up because you... Who knows, uh, you know, what might happen in the future. Wouldn't that be a deed, though, or something? It would be like a legal. Your, legal. your zoning variance uh, runs with the land. That's exactly. the terminology we always use. Exactly. Um, so it is effectively a deed restriction. Well, um, I've, got a, I've got kind of an off-the-wall idea, and it was mostly directed at uh, Chris Jensen. The town routinely enters into water management facilities agreements with developers and HOAs who are maintaining stormwater ponds. This stream seems like a stormwater facility, 
that needs to be maintained. It looks from the map that it's almost entirely on this property. Why don't we do that? Chris Jensen, do you, is that it's, off it's the a, wall? That's off the wall because it's a DEC thing. And if you do anything in the stream, you need like an article 15 protection of waters permit. Okay. And, and, the, and the water that we're talking about, Chris Nadler, is, is, not, um, is not constant. This, the last time this happened, to my knowledge, was over more than 10, maybe 15 years ago. So um, I, I think if you had a continuous condition like you're talking about, that might make some sense. But I think, I think doing what we've done and, and, and whatever language you'd like to place into your variance, I think that's a good way to handle it. That's my opinion. I'm comfortable with that. All right. Would you like to hear from Andrew on the? Uh, yeah. Slide? If you have other people that you want to bring up, and then I'm going to open it up to the audience. So. No, I'm glad you have this photograph because I think Andrew will benefit from that as well. Andrew, I'll let you use my laser pointer if you want. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> if you, if you, you want to use the mouse, then the people online can oh, see where you're yeah. yeah. So if, since we have this. I'm sorry, what, what was your name? I'm sorry, I'm Andrew Murphy with RPK Landscape Andrew. Architecture. Um, with this image up, we did we did also want to show that across um, across the creek, there's also significant uh, mature canopy coverage. So um, I believe one of the comments last time around was you know, concerns around the spawning in the stream and the amount of shade that the stream receives and receiving that a similar amount. Um, so that was something that uh, we noticed from the aerial and then another site visit uh, today to confirm that there is um, that kind of continuous canopy coverage on the other side as well. Um, so when you say, I mean, like that's thing they're going to leave that there, or is this something? I mean, are you guys going to add to like what's? Yeah. So it, uh, on on uh, the parcel side of the stream, that was something that um, just pull up uh, sheet three of five. What is that? You need to say much. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Don't, back and forth. Right? Don't click on it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Which, which one did you want? Uh, three or five, please. Right. Okay. So, you're not seeing your um, thumb? No, I'm just getting that in your way. No, no. you're not seeing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Another one of the main comments um, that we've tried to address with uh, with the updated landscape plan was uh, the trees that are along the creek, and this also came about in, in our more recent meetings. Um, originally, we had planned for uh, six with the dash circle there, six of the trees along the creek to be ground to stump the stumps to remain in place so that the root structure could continue to hold and stabilize the, the creek. Um, and you know, with the owners very interested in, in preserving as many of the trees as possible, we've taken another look at that and determined that five of those six could be could be just left to remain. Um, there was one of them, actually a couple on site that we were moving or, or taking down because of the split trunk, so it you know, presents a hazard and eventually will be coming down very soon. Um, but the black walnuts and cottonwoods, they're in um, good condition. We originally you know, wanted to take out to replace. Um, we determined that we, you know, they would, we would be willing to leave those in, in place uh, in the interest of um, maintaining <coughs> that existing mature canopy coverage. So that's part of those six, I think you said on that side, or is that actually just, you, you're definitely taking out those six and there's others? Are the X's on up there, the ones you're talking about? The, so these, I'll, click on, I'll kind of go over with the cursor right now, these five that have dash circle around the center okay. Okay. those are ones that originally we had considered taking down to stump and leaving in place um that we've reconsidered could be could be left in place and, and untouched the um all the trees you see with the axes are ones that um because of the infrastructure or because of their condition uh, would need to be taken out um, it is we are so original Original count was was 30, 34 site trees to be removed for one reason or another. And 
having since updated the landscape plan and kind of evened out the numbers a little bit. Um, where should I go for uh, to pull up another? Um, where it says board fit the third tab. Okay, we'll have the other. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so this updated landscape plan represents um, changes since our, our last meeting. We've come back in with um, uh, a lot more proposed trees and shrubs, especially along, along the creek bank. Um, all in all, we're proposing 28 um, canopy or keystone tree species, as well as 94 different uh, woody shrubs, uh, mostly natives. Um, this was exciting for, for us to, to look at the site and um, Yes, you know, it is a wooded site, but it's all primarily two species. There's the black walnut and cottonwoods, which tend to be uh, aggressive natives, whereas now we have the opportunity to come back in with oaks, um, tulip trees, birches, and, and really just uh, a little bit more ecological diversity to, um, you know, to keep the woodland look, but also the woodland uh, utility, the actual ecological utility. So, yeah, to, to keep it brief, we're proposing a great number of um, replacement trees and, and woody shrubs, and I can speak in more detail to those if, if you need. Do you have the numbers? How many are coming down? How many are going to be planted? So 34 would be coming down. Um, six, originally six were proposed to be ground to stump, uh, but those, we could, we could bring that down to one ground to stump and only five of them. And then in terms of new trees, it would be um, 28 new trees to supplement all the existing trees and, um, and 94 woody shrubs of one, of one type or another. Uh, just for the site, you know, getting, once, once the house is tied down, um, you know, working with the architect, we'll figure out the foundation plan, but um, those numbers pertain just to the larger, larger site. Andrew, could you tell them about the riparian areas? Well, yep, the riparian, so the riparian area that Scott was referencing, we've um, uh, specified a conservation seed mix as opposed to a, a turf lawn. So this entire green hatch um, area that you see on, on that side of the driveway and then on the opposite side as well to follow, to follow the grading, um, that would be a, a conservation mix, um, mix of approximately 20 to 25 native grasses and perennials um to um yeah to, again to provide that that diversity and also work with the uh, stormwater design in slowing the velocity of the water okay anybody else you got any anybody have any other questions no, i'm assuming this is like the drain underneath the drive um there's a call there's a culvert underneath the, the driveway for normal flows if this the overflow event were to occur again, the water would go over the driveway. Okay. All right, so we'll open it up to the audience. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, my name is Cheryl Linda Hooker. Um, I am um, one of a family group uh, that owns the property immediately to the south of this. If we could have the um, that encore um, view up, that would be helpful, I think. Um, so I'm, um, I apologize for not having been here last month. I realize I'm coming in kind of towards the end of the discussion. Um, but, and I have written a letter that I don't, I only um, sent the town yesterday, so I don't know if you've had an opportunity to yes. read it yet. I'm not gonna just read it again. Um, hopefully you've, you've absorbed it, but I would like to make some points. Um, I'll just try to kind of summarize what I have to say about the, um, the, the variance tests in particular. Um, to, to begin with, I have to say I'm, um, there are a couple of reasons why I probably should be keeping my mouth shut here. One is I'm, a little hesitant to um, uh, oppose a very well-developed uh, plan on the part of a neighbor 
Um, and the second one is that the encroachments into the 100 um, foot setback are something that applies to the property that my family owns. Um, there are actually two buildings that come within um, uh, 35 feet of the stream uh, that, that are part of our complex there on the south side of Menkeith Creek and also our tennis court, which is right opposite the Chotland property here um, does. So, um, you know, you may consider that I'm being a little hypocritical in um, objecting to this, but I kind of feel as if somebody needs to stand up for the, for the wooded property here. And so um, I'm here anyway, and I have shared my concerns with the Shotlands and they have been very uh, cordial and uh, willing to talk. And I've been uh, very happy to, to be able to talk about alternatives with them. So um, the, the, the title that's on this, this development in the, uh, the plans and so on is uh, the house in the woods, the woods house or La Maison des Bois as the, um, the architectural rendering says. So that's a house in the woods, which is an idea that I find very appealing. Um, but I don't believe that this, that's, that's an accurate description. Um, this, if you want a house in the woods, you do not start by clearing the site of the great majority of the trees there. Um, this is not a house in the woods. It's a very elegant house um, set in a very beautiful, beautifully landscaped lawn. That's very different from a house in the woods. This is a house in a place where the woods used to be. And the woods that are there now, which serve the function of a true riparian buffer, a mature um, landscape buffer on the uh, edge of the woods, that woods is a casualty of this project. Um, my discussion is going to be basically on the five tests for an area variance. Um, I'll just go through them one at a time and kind of give you a summary of, of my, my reaction. Uh, the first one is whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to the nearby properties um, as a result of the granting of this variance. The applicant has indicated that the, the proposed use is consistent with the surrounding neighborhood. Um, it is true that the surrounding neighborhood is residential, um, but that's not the same thing as saying this is not detrimental. This parcel is a really unusual and rare instance of a wooded, uh, a, a large wooded parcel within the, the delta portion of um, one of these sites. And if you look at Menteith Point in the context of also Titchener Point and Point Rochester, there's nothing else like this. This is there, there's two acres of woods there um, on the Shotland part. There's another roughly something a little bit less than an acre of woods adjacent to the creek on our side. Um, and at the other points, there's nothing like that. Um, and the, uh, so this is kind of an unusual, a rare even uh, example of a wooded riparian buffer. And riparian buffers are addressed extensively in the town's open space plan. They go on and on about the value of the riparian buffer, why you need to have natural ve uh, vegetation as, you know, it, it, for a deep band along the sides of the streams. Um, so, and I know the Environmental Conservation Board's comments um, address that as well. So I, to my mind, the clearing of an existing riparian buffer in order to, to accommodate a new development of the house is definitely an undesirable change of character in the neighborhood and, uh, and actually in the town as a whole because it represents the loss of a rare um, uh, environmental or natural resource environmental feature. Um, so test number two, whether the benefit sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method that's feasible for the applicant to pursue other than an area of variance. Um, here, the applicant has argued that this proposed site plan is the only or the optimal development solution given the, all of the required setbacks and utilities and floodplain and access and so on. Um, I respectfully disagree from this statement. Um, I believe if the applicant had approached the design of this with the assumption that that 100 foot setback was a true constraint, they could have come up with a, a very reasonable plan that would uh, essentially make use of, the, of the, the, the northern portion, the portion outside the 100 foot setback, and they could accommodate, I mean, that's still, if you kind of look at the site plan and you eyeball it, it looks as if the 100 foot setback is roughly half of the site, um, something close to an acre, maybe it's a little more than an acre, a little less, but it's about half the site. So they've still got about an acre between the setback line, the stream setback line and the, uh, and the driveway. Um, and, I think it's quite possible for, for a, a, 
the program that they have to fit in that area. Um, if you look at the site plan itself, and I'm sure you, you did this when you first considered the thing last month, it's possible to just take the, the building and shift it to the north so it's outside of the, of, of the required 100 foot setback. Um, that's, I'm not saying that that would be the right thing to do. Um, it would bring it quite close to the driveway. Um, it could also be tilted. It could be rotated so that it's on a different orientation and that would take it outside of the 100 foot setback. Um, or you could start over again and just sort of, you know, sort of reconceive the development in a way that doesn't disturb the 100 foot riparian buffer. Um, maybe the house would have to be a little smaller. Maybe you would need, need area variances for the, for the side setback or for the rear setback. Um, I'm not saying there wouldn't be compromises and it certainly wouldn't be the same thing, um, but it is an alternative. And there's another alternative also, which is for the for the Shawlands to build on the adjacent parcel to the north, which they own, um, 5273, which was uh, the site of the Mies House, um, and which is now a nice generous lawn dividing two other or the three properties that um, are owned by the Shawlands. But that's a 1.3 acre parcel. It's got plenty of space to accommodate the, the program for this site. So my point is that this design is not the only alternative this year. Um, the uh, test number three, whether the requested area variance is substantial. Um, the argument that they make here is that the variance is not substantial because um, when compared with the immediate neighborhood, there are a lot of other encroachments. Um, and in particular, they cite the ones on the um, uh, riser Robitz property to the east and also um, on our property to the south. Um, I'm very familiar with those. And in those cases, um, two of them have come before the board within the last five years or so. Uh, there was no variance required because it's, as you know, it's the town's policy to allow the continuation of pre-existing non-conformity, um, even when there's a, a replacement of an existing building. So um, in my view, it's really not appropriate or convincing to cite these nonconformities uh, in nearby properties as a justification for a, uh, an area variance. Um, these nonconformities date back at least 50 years, um, you know, back in the first half in the, um, uh, you know, up through the 1970s. Um, there was no zoning. It, people routinely built close to the streams. It was uh, people were not so aware of the environmental issues that we're facing today um, as we are now. And those, um, you know, change of climate, more severe storms, loss of wildlife habitat, um, you know, degrading water quality in the lake. Um, these are all, all things that are, are, are modern problems. And if we're going to make any progress on addressing them uh, by enforcement of the town's new laws that try to address these things, We've got to stop citing the precedent of, of buildings that have, uh, or development, you know, moves that were made 50 years ago and more. Um, I believe the grandfather provision is a good one, um, but I, I would have to say that a variance that reduces a required 100 foot setback down to 35 feet, that is a substantial variance. Four, whether the proposed variance will have an adverse impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood. The applicant has argued that the vegetation will be preserved along the stream bed and in the buffer, and that the stream, ban um, the stream bank will be protected. Um, to, to, my, to my mind, the, the most recent um, planting plans um, uh, and site plan do not support this statement. Um, out of the 55 inventory trees, the, the, you know, up until the changes that they're proposing, they're talking about today, only, only 12 trees were going to remain plus the six stumps. And now they're saying, okay, we'll, we'll keep the trees for five of the six stumps. So that's 17 trees. But that's still the great majority of the trees on this site are coming down. And they don't even mention the understory, all the smaller trees and the shrubs and the ground cover and all, I mean, this is a, this is a clearing project um, with, with the exception of a relatively small number of existing trees. They're gonna go for bare ground and they're gonna regrade and the woods is going to be gone. Um, the, um, I, I, I admire the landscape plan. I mean, they certainly have wonderful 
wonderful native trees. And in, you know, 30 or 50 years when these trees mature, it's going to be, it's going to have to be a nice canopy. But their concept is still to have a house in a generous grassy lawn with a lot of beautiful trees and shrubs in it. That's a very different thing from what the, from a, a, what a riparian buffer should be. Um, the, the value of a riparian buffer and a wooded one is to act as a sponge, um, to absorb water, particularly when there are high, um, uh, you know, heavy storms and flood events. Um, a good riparian buffer will allow the, allow the stream water to spread out and slow down and drop all of its debris and mud and do all those things before all that stuff gets out, you know, shoots out into the lake and causes one of those brown muddy plumes that you see every, every time uh, there's a heavy storm. Um, the riparian buffer on both sides of the stream here, not just on this property, but on our side and also on Henry's property, which is just downstream from this, it, it, work, it, it plays that function. It works, it doesn't work perfectly. I mean, during, during these uh, large and even moderate sized flooding events, there is, there is mud and mess downstream on, on our property, both sides of the stream. Um, and that's, you know, we, we've learned to live with it. Um, uh, but to, to eliminate that, uh, really more than half of the existing wooded area, um, uh, to my mind, is just a step in the wrong direction on the environmental uh, conditions in the neighborhood. So the last uh, test is whether the alleged difficulty is self creating <laughs> or not, um, and the applicant acknowledges that the difficulty is self-created. This is refreshing. Uh, people don't usually admit that, although it's fairly obvious often. Um, and they, it, the applicant does state again that they believe that there is not a practical location for the residents without the stream setback variance. I'm skeptical of this statement. Um, there's been some discussion about it, um, but to my mind on a parcel of 1.9 acres with something like half of it falling within this 100 foot stream setback, um, there has to be room for a reasonable plan uh, without encroaching on the stream setback. So um, as a, I, I've been a member of the Environmental Conservation Board for 10 years. I'm not any, or I'm sorry, for five years. Um, and I've observed the development scene and, and reviewed a lot of, a lot of uh, projects that required area variances. And I find the whole business to be kind of unsettling and frustrating as I'm sure you do. Um, because in a lot of cases, the variance requests really just seem to be driven by the fact that the person wants to have a larger house than the, than the lot can support. And, um, uh, and, and because the environmental priorities that are, are, are built into the town's uh, regulations here, they just don't really take very seriously. Um, so when, when, when area variances are granted, then they become part of the argument for the next round of area variances. And um, they're, they're cited as precedents. And the result is that we're just getting more and more dense development of the lakefront area, which to my mind is not, not a, a good thing. Um, this is a vicious cycle, and the vicious cycle really can only be stopped or slowed down by um, by, by the zoning board, uh, by decisions on the zoning board. So I, there are cases certainly where area variances are warranted and um, benign, and I don't believe this is one of them. So I urge the zoning board to, to vote no on this. Um, I am encouraged by the, you know, the, the, the recent um, uh, statements by the applicants that they're in favor of uh, uh, taking a different approach on the woods. And I, I, I hope that you're able to um, work something out that will result in the uh, substantial retention of the woods that's there now. So glad to answer any questions that you might have them. Thank you. Otherwise, thank you. Um, I think you can say, I don't think anybody has any questions for you. We'll, you know, if you have something else at the end, you know, we'll call you back up. Um, did you guys, anybody want to walk them? I do. Address it? So, um, so I, I think we got to like think about what we're looking at here. Mm -hmm. So the arguments you're hearing um, are really not about, they're not specific to the variance. They're about woods, when it, wherever this house goes, the woods are going to be affected. The, the question is, is there a difference between a variance and no variance. What's the impact of the variance? Not what's the impact of building a house on the spot. 
The impact of building a house on this lot is that trees will be removed, which by the way, I don't believe the town regulates the removal of trees. I think those trees, correct me if I'm wrong, but they- If it depends on how big the lot is. Right? So, so, but, and, but in I any mean, event, the, the issue is really not, it's, it, you're talking about the difference of whether a house is built or not built. Well, but Where we're also house. talking about whether it's built next to a stream and also affecting water flow. So I mean, Correct. there are right. so, two others. Which sides. is why I think, um, you know, the board needs to focus on, um, yes, there's an impact from the removal of the trees. I cannot say that removing trees is going to have an impact. But is the variance the cause of that? Regardless of where the house goes, we're not going to save any more, well, remove any more trees. And I would say, to that. personally, I mean, from this board, that's not, we, we understand what yeah. the variance is. Okay. you know go, that goes with the house we're not you know yes we all have environmental concerns but we you know we're looking at correct the basically the the five points correct. Of what so we're supposed to the character of the neighborhood i think that there's also benefit to right. the character of the neighborhood it is a developable lot the development of the house is actually going to benefit the not just the property owner but the neighbors in respect to the drainage they're actually going to improve the drainage conditions uh, so that's a positive um, impact on the neighborhood. Do the neighbors have drainage issues now? Did we, did, we didn't discuss that. Do the, there, were, there were drainage issues. And then when we put our barn in, we built a whole side. Yes. I, I, I think the, the one thing that we're trying to um, prepare for and have a good grade plan and drainage plan in place is for something <laughs> similar to what occurred about 15 years ago. That's kind of our design storm, if you will. When, when the shot was developed across the street, we had drainage issues over there and we mitigated those drainage issues as well. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the protection that Betsy's talking about, um, it was based on your charge to me last time, you know, to do something that would be protective of those properties and that's what we've done. Yeah. Now I like that you guys have worked with Kevin and you know you're doing the right you know right thing to do the research um but you know it's it's a tough it's a tough position to be in and we all have an interest in the lake right we're stewards of the, mm -hmm. of the lake and your idea is good and and when you're asking for the value we're concerned about what, what gets in the lake besides uh the overflow and and some of the noxious things that could be in that from farm runoff and all that that's not your. That's not a problem that you created. That's when you have to deal with that. Uh, that flows by, and and in the conversations, sometimes people bring up permeable pavers, uh, things like that. Because if you're replacing um, uh, trees with grass, you're not. The sponge isn't going to be perhaps as uh, as dynamic as what you would have previously. Maybe yes, maybe no. This, I'm outside my area of expertise. So then we look at all the different things to improve the spongibility. I, I just made that up uh, <laughs> of your property. So I think that's what we've also tried to look at. And you know, Scott and Andrew can get into the specifics, but you know, the approach, I do believe we meet the standards. It's a benefit to the applicant, the detriment to the health, safety, and welfare of the community. I'm not going to dispute that we're going to lose trees, but we're going to lose trees with or without the variance. And I don't want to be don't get lost in the trees. Uh, but the um, the idea here is to create some improvements and support the character of the neighborhood, to support the neighbors, improving this drainage situation. Um, the alternatives, we're, without the variance, we are not, um, we're not increasing, we're not, the, the, the variance isn't the cause of a detriment. So we're not, you know, th there's not something to be gained by any other alternative in fact it would be detrimental to the property owners and their plans for their property and put their you know potentially put their house in an undesirable location pushed up against the road which probably the rest of the neighbors wouldn't like either um so there's other um you know consequences other detriments that would come without the variance so um whether the variance is substantial you know substantiality you're looking at a number um that's all relative to other i mean there's other similar variances that have been granted but you look i think more importantly at the impact is it a substantial impact there isn't any adverse impact from the granting of the variance. If anything, there's some benefit allowing this opportunity to address the drainage uh, and you know, be as considerate of improvements that will benefit the rest of the neighborhood. Um, the physical and environmental conditions of the neighborhood, yes, the trees are gonna be lost, but that is the result of building a house, not the result of the variance itself. 
Um, and it, yes, um, I guess all variances to some extent have some element of self-creation because somebody decided to build something where something does not currently exist. Um, but it is a buildable lot um, and self-creation does not preclude the granting of area variances. So the idea here is to really have the best possible plan, not just for the property owner, but for their neighborhood. Um, if people all live very close together, they see each other regularly. Everybody tries to be considered, I think, of each other. And um, so, yeah. Well, and we, you know, I mean, as a board, we, we try to, you know, we're not here to tell people they can do something. We're just trying to make sure everybody gets along while we do it and yeah. make it a right decision for the town. So, you guys have, uh, you guys have anything else to add to that? Or uh, we should Go ahead, John. Oh, oh, yes, yeah. please. Yeah, a little background. It's on Peter Schaub, and I think I met everybody at one time or another. Um, so uh, just a little reflection back on the barn project. That was quite a doozy seven years ago. So we've had, we used to have flooding for many, many years. This was a, a Tom Mises house right here. Right, it was Tom, I'm sure, right? And every time it would flash, we'd have a river come right down the middle of our property. So that was the first step we did the barn project was can we stop the that that's that that river would occur of flash rains, right? So we, we were told we had to uh, create a new stream, uh riverbed, a bridge, you know, we had to get a fire engine across the bridge and all this stuff. So we you know we're big lake people so we, we love the whole thing, right? Uh, and that turned out to be very successful. We haven't had a drop of water uh, since we did that project. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> that led us to uh, four facilities, buildings on the property, full of asbestos. Over, which is 1,600 bags of asbestos came out of those houses, got it all cleaned up, <clears throat> and we built the barn. Uh, by the way, that was my plan was a gazebo. That, that turned out to be not a gazebo. Um, <laughs> my wife, she bimbles with me on that one. So, but one of the things, that, a, a nice story is when we, we designed the barn, uh, our, our architect said, hey, listen, you, that's your barn. That's your view of the waterfall. You're going to have that waterfall to yourself. Nobody, I want you to come around. And I said, that is the last thing we want to do. <coughs> we want everyone on Westlake Road to stop, come out of the, our plant, our, our property. They like kids go up there and play. And I want to keep that view open of the waterfall. So every year we cut down trees and branches, not trees, sorry, not trees, but branches <laughs> to, to uh, just so sort of keep the view open. So that's not relevant to this discussion, right. I realize, but exactly. it's just about how we think. Right? Very nice. It's yeah. very good. Yeah. And so when you think about this project, so uh, uh, someone said, you know, maybe we should build here. The problem is we're trying to get away from our nine grandchildren. Putting right? all the cars in that driveway. Right? Right? Yeah. We're trying to get good nine grandchildren <laughs> for one or ten. It's the same. They're all over Rochester. So that makes sense, although I think one of our kids will build there someday, right? So the woods is sort of perfect for our retreat. Right, and we, then we designed our dream home, and we decided how to sort of configure it. And it just, if we if we put it over here, I, I certainly she's totally correct because you have a long building here, but it's not. It's going to be imbalanced from there. But this what we designed is going to be gorgeous. It's going to sort of look right straight through the property, and and, uh, and we met this morning, and we made some changes to trees and and add more trees, and we're all about that stuff. Well, it's changing the building to the side though doesn't that just kind of run right through where the water would would flow over to? Isn't that the so? Yeah, we, I mean, it, the, it, 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 we're here, right? We're still going to take down most of the trees to, to yeah, leach. Well, the, the water there. comes across, it's right? Come right across, still, and it's going to come right down here. And that's the natural plane right now. There's two spots. This? Okay. So that's the expert over here, not me. Yeah. But there's a spot here okay. that comes across, and that's what we're going to deflect. Okay. Or it could come across down here closer to their home, and and that you can't stop that. One. If it comes down here, it's going to come down the road, and uh, and we're all going to get wet. Uh, right. Those are the two primary spots, I think. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, I appreciate everyone's time. I just wanted to yeah. you know, put my two cents in there. So, we appreciate that. Any, any questions for me? Anybody wants some grandchildren? <laughs> we can get extra ones. I, I have two teenagers. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, thank you. I just thank had you. one, one sure. additional thing to add up. relative to the, the house location. The, the house location that we propose is generally in this area here. Um, the comment has been made, push the house over here, potentially and try to agree with the 100 foot setback. Um, that, that is difficult to achieve, not only because of the close proximity of the existing common drive, but also in order to elevate this house to a safe elevation, 
it's not only just the footprint of the house that we're talking about, it's, it's the surrounding land that we have to lift and slope away from the house in order to achieve positive gradients. But the one other thing is that if we move the house over in this location, we create then a gap over here. And, and actually the house where it is right now creates less of a gap and, and channelizes the flow back into the creek. Whereas if we stretch it over here, then we leave ourselves open in this corner and we defeat the, the objective of what I spoke to you about originally. Okay, say that again. So like, so there would be an entry point? Let me, is that what you're referring to? How about if, um, could you please put sheet 205? So what I'm talking about is here's our house footprint and, and there's our surrounding proposed contours that enable us to reach that elevation relative to the existing elevation. We shifted this closer to the driveway. We create a gap here then and the, and the flow that we're trying to contain this way has the ability then to just bypass us and jump this area here. So the, Ironically, the closer we get to the creek, the better control we have of that condition. Would it, I mean, does it like transfer water? Like, would it kind of split it, I guess, in a sense? Yeah, or, the, the more mean, we're moving the house in this direction, the more we're then not going to be able to get the flows over here, the more they're going to travel right. in this way. I wonder if that would actually help. So, once again, these were items that I reviewed with Kevin. As you asked me to do last yeah. time. So I just wanted to let you know that. We appreciate it. All right. Sure. Come on up. Come on up. Hi, Adeline Real again with ECD. Um, so I had a couple questions. Um, we were uh, at the ECD, we were a little concerned with um, this area too, because this seemed like there was. Um, uh, that there had been a washout in that area, that that was a flooding area of concern as well. And I'm a little concerned about the proximity of that to the leach field. Um, in addition, um, the ECB, as you know from our comments before, is very concerned about feeling that this is an extremely significant area. It's, it's a hundred foot setback as we know, and we're talking about more than half of that um, as a variance. Um, and then finally, I'm a little confused um, by the riparian planning, it's almost like they're using the house like, like a dam. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like from where they're putting it, 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 it feels almost like they're they're using the house structure as um as 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 a dam. And I'm finally I'm a little concerned about how um obviously like we're saying the variance going with the property um, and this would have a detrimental effect on neighboring properties that are owned by the property owner um, and I'm a little concerned about that permanently changing the quality of the neighboring parcels. Okay, great. Who wants to address that? Come on up. Oh. Yeah, you, you know, you should have stood there, right? Okay, so um, regarding this swale that exists here. Yes. Um, that swale, based on what, what Peter spoke about with the barn project, when we corrected the drainage on the other side of the road, then this really uh, dried up, right? And, and it doesn't seem to pass much, if any, water in the last eight years that I've seen. I don't think we ever had it ever since the mid 90s. I don't think that ever got it. It came out of gravity. Yeah, so um, that's kind of a grading um, byproduct that largely falls within the right of way of Westlake Road or a portion of it anyway. Uh, so it doesn't doesn't affect our uh, dispersal area for the, the leach field. Um, when so I know you said you had a raised elevation um, because it is I know it does drop down a bit in there. So I'm assuming when. I mean, when you're bringing fill in and whatever here, I mean, where's where's that going to change? Are you just changing it in the elevated that area only, or are you going to be kind of leveling it, the, it up? The, the dispersal area is intended to agree with existing grade. Okay. Uh, the soils, thankfully, are really good and dry there, surprisingly. Um, here, we would have to bring in fill to surround right. the house in order to achieve the grades that we need to achieve. 
And yes, the the I, I wouldn't use the word dam, but I would say that the grading deflects the, the surface flows to achieve the same or very close to the same pathway that's that was created originally. Um, and and we are deflecting it onto um, largely the, the vacant parcel here, but somewhat on the uh, the house in this area too by the flight pole. I don't know, did I cover all the items? Did I miss anything? I think so. Um, let's see, what, what else What else did you have? I don't I forgot. Did we miss anything? No. No, we're good. Just... Um, so, with the water deflection, I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, you've, you've got the plantains and the grass mixture and, and whatnot that's going to slow down the flow and also filter it, correct? I guess that's the sponge. Uh, yeah, uh, that's we're, the we're, sponge. We're, we're the sponge. That's Bob's word, spongy <laughs> something. <laughs> Spongeability. Spongeability. I mean, yeah. when I was out there walking the site with Kevin Albany, he mentioned, you know, that this area was full of invasives, and he suggested that we do Is that? exactly okay. that. Right. Um, so we took that cue, and uh, okay. and that's why we show what we show. So he had mentioned that his son potentially would be maybe building a house on the other parcel. Is that going to just push water over to him? <laughs> um, I, I don't know if we've defined the plans no, for, for not. that. I will be around for it. <laughs> um, yeah. if, if, if you were to develop, I can't do this here. You want to use this? It would be back. It would be way back here. Right. Because that looks like a really narrow lot. I don't know what. It, it, is, it is narrower. That's true. Yeah. It's, it's actually the same width as the lot right up here. Is it? It's about 100 feet, I think. Yeah, there are 100, 100 feet in width. And when we when we did the project across the street, we put in uh, dispersal areas for this house and a future house here as well. Um, but if the, if the question is whether the Shotlands would want to put another house over here. I think the answer is resoundingly no. Um, that, that would not be the right place to put it. You guys have any more questions? Uh, board? Anybody else from the audience? Anybody online? No? All right. Okay. Are you comfortable closing? Okay, great. So we'll we'll uh, you know wait to the end of the uh, the other cases and we'll make our decision. You're welcome to stick around or we can give you a shout. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. All right. Where, are we? Where is my agenda? Okay. Maybe. Okay. All right, so uh, Marathon Energy for Richard, is it Tide? 39 Teeds, excuse me, sorry. Uh, for property at 2640 Brickyard Road, representing the, the Bruners, is it? The Bruners, so the Bruners. I'm Rich Teedy right. from Marathon Engineering, Okay. representing Joseph and Elizabeth Bruner, uh, owner of Luna Properties and Joseph's Artists and Meats. Uh, so the property is located at the corner of Brickyard Road and North Street, um, borders right on the city property. Uh, some of you, I believe, may have been on the board in 2017 when they came in and were granted one of the variances that we're looking to reestablish tonight. Um, due to unforeseen circumstances, they, they never finished up with the site plan approval and the construction didn't happen and, and based upon the information in the variance that expired after a year with no construction. Right. So the one variance that we're looking to reestablish is the rear setback. Uh, we're reducing that to five feet. That's the same as what it was before. Uh, the footprint of the building is a little bigger than what they were planning back in 2017. Uh, as such, there's, there's a one-story addition on the northerly end that that's basically going to be storage for maintenance equipment for the site and, and some of his materials that he needs. Uh, that is the other variance that we're requesting. So we're reducing that setback to 52 feet, I believe. So this site is a redevelopment site. It's in the industrial district. It is a 
Um, the closest thing that it matches is a manufacturing use. Uh, so this industrial district has some different regulations based upon the uses. So we've matched this up to a manufacturing use we've discussed with Sean and Chris um, and, and kind of gone through the a little bit. So the addition that he's proposing is going to be primarily a two-story addition onto his existing building that kind of wraps around to the south and the west. And then to the northwest is, as I mentioned, a one-story uh, storage barn for taking care of and covering up his equipment. A lot of that right now is stored behind his existing building. A little bit of reconfiguration of the parking um, as he expands his business, which he's under a lot of pressure to expand. He makes some very good product. Um, he's going to add some employees, but a lot of it is going to be some more automated equipment too. So he needed 50 parking spaces. So we did a combination of restriping some of the existing parking area and adding a parking area to the east. Um, and the other part of the whole process is kind of making the process through the building run more efficiently. So there's an existing loading dock that is on the northern end of the building. That's going to remain. Uh, right now, that is incoming raw materials and outgoing product. So that is going to become just incoming raw materials. And we've added loading docks on the southerly end of the building for outgoing product. He expects roughly 10 trucks a week. Sometimes there's two or three in a day, sometimes there's one in a day, sometimes there's none in a day. Um, so we initially laid this out with two entries on North Street. One was actually going to be an entrance and an exit for the trucks. Um, we have gotten some feedback that um, both Jim Fletcher and the city DPW really don't want the second one that is the exit closer to there. So we're working through, I believe we can get the trucks turned around in there. It's a tight turn and, and back out the more westerly entrance. So I'm, I'm utilizing a truck as I'm trying to lay this out that is, they call it an interstate tractor mm -hmm. with a reefer trailer, which is a 50 foot trailer with basically a truck that's a long nose with a sleeper cab. It's about the biggest that you're gonna see possibly even come in and out there. So we're gonna get that to work. Um, this is a concept plan. We haven't gone into some deep engineering yet. The site layout, I feel, is, is pretty substantial, pretty good. I think it's, it's set pretty good, um, but we really can't do a lot with a site until we nail down the building footprint. And the two variances that we're requesting are a very important part of nailing down that footprint. So at this point, I'd like to open up to any questions for you. Okay, so you see so the variances will allow you to do the first part of the project or whatever stage, right? Is that what, what you're saying? And then you're going to... So the, the variances will let us define this the, footprint the that we're looking at right now will work and it'll let me finalize the site and go through the site plan process with the planning board. And, and, what, and the one that we granted before was for the five foot? The, the five foot, yes on the rear, which has really a substantial, I don't know if anybody recalls, there's a pretty substantial buffer with a, a drainage stream in between there um, that I believe he also had an agreement with the neighbor to, to provide fire access if yeah, necessary. Yeah, I vaguely remember that. that. I do remember that part. All right. And, and the one on the northerly side, that parcel right now is vacant, it's wooded. Yeah. Um, if it were ever to be sold and something built there, there's a pipeline easement that goes through there that kind of creates another extra buffer space mm -hmm. in addition to that. Does anybody from the board have any? Nothing? Let's say okay. This is the second time you've asked for a variance. Based on how what you're doing with the property, it doesn't look like uh, we'll be seeing you again for this piece of uh, uh, property. I think you're you're uh, trying to uh, utilize uh, uh, all that you can with what you have. Yes, he, he's, he's actually got a very strong team on board. He's got a design build team from the construction end, getting things priced out. He's got an architect. He brought myself on board from the civil engineering side to nail down the site. So um, I did see some of the materials before that they, they 
have done it themselves, I believe, and th this is a lot further along than that. He, he's, he really needs to expand and really wants to stay in this location, in the town, you know, so supporting the, his employees in the town and the town itself. He's almost going to outgrow it. Uh, he's <laughs> trying to build in the future. There you go. Into this. So, so he, I believe the prior thought process was he was going to have a little bit taller building like is out there now and um, more open space inside. And, and he's looking at actually two stories of, of internal floor space to, to use for product. So the 28 foot variance from the side property line. So, okay. So we're just, I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to picture it. Where can you point exactly? exactly where? So this is the front of the building. Right. So we've defined this as the front of the road. And mm -hmm. We've had a lot of discussion with Chris. So but this is the front. This makes this the rear. So we're calling right. that the rear setback variance. This is then a side with the other front on North Street. Right. So this would be the mm -hmm. side. If there's a little bit different nomenclature, we got to use for that. And the rear part. Okay. So, I, so like from the north end, right? Did you say the north end? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't think, I think I'm, I'm, I'm good with questions. Nobody else has any questions How about anybody from the audience? Anybody online? All right. Are you comfortable closing? Yes. All right. Uh, I'll give you the same spiel. We'll probably, you know, vote on it tonight. We have six, 60 days. Is it 60 days that we get? We may have yes, 60. Well, anyway, we typically 60, vote on it. 62. 62. We have 62 days to uh, vote on it, but typically we do it in the same night. I'll so. vote on it tonight. I'll Most likely, this. yes. Yeah. I don't yeah. think you'll be too much. Yeah. No. Well, hopefully. Right? Okay. <laughs> That's up to you guys. <laughs> yeah, you're like the pressure's on. Yeah. Yeah, we're Thank most likely much. we'll have we'll 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 back tonight. Okay. All right. Welcome to sticker. I will. All right. All right. Last but not least, right. Brian and Mary Weiser. Well, good evening. Thanks for the uh opportunity to, to speak to you tonight. And I think we have what two variances that we're requesting. Yes. One is the setback. Um and the other is the actual size of the shed we are looking to build. Okay. Okay. So um, I don't know how much uh, I should go into it, but uh, this is uh, obviously where we're looking to build the shed. Um, the uh, it's 13 feet, I think, from the road. Although there's no bend in here, it goes up, uh, and then there's a hill that slopes down this way, and this is an open grass area. Okay. And the shed's just is a utility shed. What, it, what do you? It's storage. There's no garage in the property. There's no garage. There's no, you know, we're we're parking on the street, and we have uh, you know, it's outdoor furniture that we just put in a, a very nice deck. You can look at the original mid-century modern view of the house, mm -hmm. and you know, furniture things like that. All of our summer furniture, cattleboards, or kayaks, or mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's all about really constant other storage. Space. It looks awful. <laughs> yeah. So we'd like to be able to clean it up and put it. Put yeah. It in. And um, I don't know if, if it was in the submission, but we certainly were looking to make the shed. It, it's kind of a cool look to house and try to keep that original 1950s look. Mm -hmm. The idea is the shed would, would look very similar to the house and have a slope roof up. Uh, so yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Picture. Yeah. It's so almost a mini version of the house, if you will, uh, to try to really preserve that look. Um, the other thing about that part of the slope that it would be on, mm -hmm. uh, we believe that would definitely be much more appealing from the lake because if it had to come down on the lot, it would be almost mm -hmm. right in your face, you know, so to speak. And where it's, we have it set back, uh, we think it would be actually hard to see. Um, okay. And also green space of, if it were, we're closer, would be the only green space we would have to have family entertainment. Yeah. yeah. It's um, not pulling up the pictures right now. I'm, I'm not sure where the picture is. Oh, my turn. Photo is, photo I got is. them. Do you want it? It's right at the bottom of those photos. Oh, it's that one? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. 
Just to clarify, if you look, read the zoning law determination, it looks like there's going to be four variances they're looking for. Right. Okay. Four variances. Hmm. So, yeah. So that would be the only other option, I guess, would be right down in this area here. Um, one other thing uh, we did want to mention that I think is not correct in the drawing is we would need for we both pine trees to come out. This is one that was on the drawing would be right where you um, stuck in and out of the shed. Right? It would be where the door would be. You're going to take a couple of pines down? Is that yes. Two pines. One is X'd out already. Okay. Yeah. The other we is still is. have a number of maples and willow. And, uh, and there's a couple of other trees. Yeah. yeah, so this one. Uh, yeah. Do you, do you know when you sent them? Oh, that was time ago. Your one's dated uh, four one. Fine. The photos are going to be different. Oh, we can try that one. That's that's, that's yeah, that's probably that's so it would be right. Okay. That is what it would look like. That's what it would look like, yes. With the door being on the side. Yeah, the door being on this side. The garage yeah. deck. Okay. Easy access for in that area there. We'll walk down. What was the size of the shed? About 12 inches. What's the proposed height? 10 10. And the reason it's 10 inches over was due to the slope and protecting the roofing material, making sure that the ice gets off the roof because it is a so, so, you're, so you're going for an, an additional variance then for exceeding the yes. 10 foot maximum height. Okay. Ten so inches, the third, yeah. What is the fourth variance? Sorry, I didn't. Um, that, would the, that would be the fifth variance. Fifth variance, right? Or so three. I thought we only had three, but okay. I mean, what? Of course. Yeah, and we're in here. You have lot coverage, building coverage, okay, lot coverage. Uh, okay. uh, yeah. square footage, uh, accessory structure. That's right. And, and that okay. allowance. Uh, thanks. Thanks. It is a small lot. Uh, but but the, height, the height wasn't advertised and stuff, so right. you can't act on the height. I did change it. The architect did change it. He said that it's as low as you can go. Yeah, so, so the one thing is we, we have to... Um, publicly really, you know, like yes. tell people ahead of time what's, what's, so because the application technically isn't correct, okay. we'd have to repost it. Okay. So okay. what we would normally do is just put you on next month's okay. agenda. Unless um, you think you can build it at 10 foot. Unless you less. think, right. Hi. Yeah, okay. guys, so your choice. Harvey thinks it would compromise the structure. Well, sure. try. Okay. But I, yeah. I have to bring this to your attention. Yes. Sure. I'm a residential lakefront owner myself. And the residential lakefront district is uh, very challenging. Mm -hmm. And your variance request for an accessory structure that is greater than the square footage that is allowed is something that the zoning board the ordinance committee have been very restrictive on. Mm -hmm. Personally, I don't like it. Okay. I'm, a, uh, I'm the chair of the ordinance committee and I welcome you to get on board and help us change that because I think it is too restrictive. Um, and there's a lot of those types of restrictions. So, and I also think that your square footage variance is impacting your lot coverage and your building coverage, which are a couple of other restrictions that we're very diligent about. So it would be difficult, I'm sure, for this board to go and pass this because they're concerned about setting precedents uh, and that's just kind of where I am on this. I would, I would uh, go on along with what John said. I'd recommend uh, put it back a month and then come in and, and work with Shauna 
and see uh, what she can do. And also, you see, then she would have comparables. How we have we done this before? And if we have with something the size, of, and when you're throwing so many out at once, all you have to do is be shot down on one, and and then so Shauna can work with you we on, work with on that. Yet. And and I think that would be a, a good idea. So you'd be more ready, and she also might be able to uh, anticipate some of the questions you might get. And John gave you a little preview. Right. So that, you know, if you have neighbors with similar conditions, mm -hmm. you might want to point those out. But more, there are most of them are pre existing. But more importantly, there are, are new ones that have been approved by um, the town, um, so that you can come back and say, well. I did you know, my neighbor one. had this one. Did you? Also, you, so. you submitted a compare, some comparable? Comparable, um, but it was a pre-existing. Not yeah, see, yeah. so we've we've been on the board for a while. Yeah. And honestly, I do know that there are some that we have, but that we really, we, we try our best to get people to reduce not only the amount of variances they're requesting, but at least try to work as closely as possible to, so to what it goes. My question to you is what would a size? That's the question you have to ask Sean. And she would know, you know, yeah. uh, with how it would work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're asking for five, it would be very unusual for somebody to get five out of five. Uh, I, I can't Doesn't remember. It can't happen. It can't happen. It depends but, on. It, um, yeah. but there, you might be able, there maybe is more than one way to skin a cat. Talk to her. And, and see what you can get. Would you agree, John? Yes, that would absolutely. Be a way to go. Okay. Yeah, what were her biggest? Well, we and, and as you can see, <laughs> to, to Bob's point about how many variance requests you got and you asked for, they kind of intertwined. You know, so when you go and you're asking for 104 square foot variance relative to the size of the accessory structure, as I meant, noted earlier. That kind of ties into your lot coverage and your building coverage. So, if you reduce one, you reduce them both. If you increase one, you re you increase them all. So, um, it's just FYI. That's all. Okay. okay. So, so we'll push it to next month, I guess. Or we would we vote on that? Or yeah, I think, we have to vote on. I think that they have to ask us if we would. Would you like continue. to continue your request yes. into next month's meeting? Yeah. All right. Okay. And, but do I hear a second? Great. Am I the first? Or you were the first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All in favor. Uh, All right. Thank, All right. thank, thank you. you very thank much. you. So we're, we'll, we will be on the agenda for next month. Yep. Yeah. Great. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. So we're right here. All right. All right. Okay. We'll go to the top of the top of the, top of the list. Are we ready to discuss? Do we want to go to the top of the list? Going to the property? Yes. Yeah, it might as well, right? I mean, go to the first. So now that I uh, I read the letter from Ms. Hooker and I. To be honest with it, I she pretty much followed right down the line as to what my feelings were about this. I, I hate to admit that I ever would agree with an attorney, but I agree with the shallow attorney regarding this is not about the trees to me. It has right. the trees are going to come and, and go. I think we get hung up on this board over trees. Uh, they're not going to be here forever. And, and sometimes it's a good thing to take them down. And, and I understand why. But this is meant to three. Same thing I said last time we did this thing. This is not some little stream, and you won't find very many of these that go into Mud Creek. Most of them are on the east side. Or, I'm sorry, into the Canadian Lake, but most of them are on the east side. But this is this is like West River at times, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the problem that they have. This this is not a little. I mean, this isn't the streams that we've seen off a of dual road or all the you know that the, the code says. This is a big time issue. It maybe never is going to be. Like I would hold my breath. It could be next. You know. We could next March, this thing could be, you know, this is West River. So that's my problem. I don't care what people do with their property as long as they stay within code. 
but I, I think she hit this thing from the five issues regarding a variance. I think she was spot on. It's, it's substantial. It's, it is out of the character of the neighborhood. To me, it is. It, it's the other variances that we did regarding uh, closer to the lake were all pre-existing non-conforming. And that's the reason they got the variance. There was really very little else to go there, you know, and uh, I, I think you've got neighbors, a lot of them to go along with it, but clearly there's some neighbors that are not too happy. With it. Um, and it all depends upon how close the creek is in, and how it affects your life. The creek, see, I agree with you. The creek is the biggest issue. I would, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, no, go, go ahead. I, I, if we were to vote, uh, if this was approved, I'd like um, Chris Nadler uh, to be in on the conditions. And I don't feel that I have a grasp on putting the conditions around. I think the way this one would be put in writing is very crucial. And I wouldn't want to just uh, do it tonight. Uh, I, I think it needs uh, a careful consideration and use uh, Chris. And who knows, maybe he'd even want to run by Ovaney uh, uh, yes, after we come up with the conditions. I mean, it's a big line. It's a beautiful design. I mean, this is the these. I hate these because they're they're so good. But at the same time, uh, I worry about the issue of precedence when it comes to, to an issue. With and that, not only that, but the good intentions of the current owners aren't the same thing as what could happen down the road. That's why the wording, uh, the conditions, to me, are, are of vital importance if it was to be approved. Along those lines, Chris Jensen, I think had a whole lot of verbiage there for um, what the condition should be. Okay. I think the condition is the owner's acceptance that they could be impacted by a flash flood condition. And I think we could, with that, to me, that seems like a pretty simple condition. And it's something that we could condition an approval on that the attorneys, Chris and the Shetland's attorney, could develop the language. Uh, I think the Shetland's indicated that they were comfortable with that. And, um, you know, Chris Jensen articulated what his concern was, and I think Chris Nadler heard it. So I think that's a simple hurt. Um, personally, I think the Shetlands did, uh, and their consultants did a very good job. I think they put the house in, my opinion, the best location they could have put it in without regrading and then disturbing even more of the existing lands uh, because they're putting it in the high spot. They're not putting it in the area where the water collects. And that was my concern when we got together the first time. So that location where the water is going to collect is still there and it's still flowing in the same general direction. And I think that um, the architect and the engineer did a very good job with that and addressed the concern I had. Uh, I also think that you know, I heard the concern, Bob, about, you know, grass versus trees. And I think that um, with my limited experience, grass creates more of a sponge oh, really? and also creates a filtering aspect when, the, when the silt runs through it. Um, Plus, but it all depends on whether the water is running or the water is standing, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, so if the water is running and there's trees there and there's not a lot of grass and growth, it's going to disturb the soils and move the soils and you get erosion. If you get a lot of grass there and the water's running, running through the grass, well, it gets filtered out and the silt gets filtered out and becomes topsoil down the road. Yeah. Um, you know, the other thing I was concerned about was that um, uh, some of the presentations that we heard were more concerned about the trees, but I don't think it's our responsibility to protect private woodlands. I mean, people are buying these lands, they're putting a lot of money into it. And if they wanna cut down a few trees to build a home, I mean, who are we to say that they can't do it? I, mean, I, I think wasn't really, yeah, so I wasn't as concerned about trees. Yes, I don't want them all, you know, ripped down. Obviously they're there and they're, you know, holding the embankment the structure. I mean, there's, there's they play a conserver part. I get that part. My biggest concern was just that the amount of water coming through because I mean that does turn just like you said. I mean it's it's 
it gets wet. And then you know, and Kevin's uh, concern was the banks. Yes, and his he, big he, thing right. was and they the addressed banks. that. Right. I mean, I, Kevin exactly. even Kevin even right. said that they addressed that in his yeah. emails. And then relative to it being in harmony with the existing properties there, that's why I drove to the back of that property mm -hmm. is because the other home is just as close as what they're proposing and the banks are the same and the whole development yeah, of one. that lot is extremely similar to what the shotlands are doing. And so I, in my mind, it is it's very, very similar. Very, very. I, I will say, I do know that Sarah Linda was opposed to that one on the corner there. The, the, uh, what's, what's the other there that we used? Was Heiser. Same. Yeah. I, right. Heiser. Heiser. Um, anyway, she, she was really opposed to that. She was very outspoken about it. And, but the thing is, is, I mean, they, there was an existing house that couldn't even live in it. I mean, it was, there was much different situation. I believe that they moved it slightly. Mm -hmm. um, I voted for that, and I, I voted and I voted that. for almost every, you know. I do think this is a unique deal. That's it my is. feeling on yeah. it, and that's the problem I have with it because this is a beautiful structure they're building and all of that. However, and I don't, I don't care if there were four times as many trees when that when Menneth Creek floods. Oh, I know the water's going, and, and you know I don't know whether this the house location is going to help that hurt that. But if there ever was a reason to have the code have a hundred foot setback away from the stream. This is it. And if that is, you know, and if that doesn't, maybe the code is, is wrong. Like you say, there's many that are wrong. I voted for many stream issues regarding, you know, but this is this is a big one right here. Yeah, <laughs> if there was an existing house, it'd be a different story, right? I mean, but there, it's, a whole of it's an area that's not even developed yet. How many spots on Candigal Lake are going to find like that? Yeah. Not many. No. And, no. and using the, applying the current science, Everything sounds great, but we won't know until say next spring. Right. You know what we what we really have. Yeah, and, but they, but I have a feeling that these people will make adjustments uh, if uh, if necessary based on uh, uh, conditions at the moment. Well, I don't think that we're talking about the spring floods that are the impact or the concern here. Oh, not even with the ice jams and stuff. I think we're talking about what I thought I heard was we were talking about. The 50 year occurrence or the 100 year occurrence where um, we have extreme flooding conditions. And I thought I heard where Scott say, well, we know what happened once 15 years ago or 20 right. years ago. So I don't think we're talking about the average spring oh, okay. runoff. And, and Was that your impression too? Okay. If anybody who was on Kennedy was late uh, in Agnes. You know, what was that? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that was a June runoff. I yeah. mean, again, I'm I'm not against build what you want as long as you're I mean, it's about the code to me. It's yeah. about the establishing yeah. residence on a piece of property that hasn't even been developed. And yeah. we go ahead and say, well, and this is a substantial offset to to that, and that's my only problem. It's I don't they're gonna handle I, I'm not worried about this house blowing away in, in a, in a even in another Agnes. Yeah, I know. Blow it maybe, but, <laughs> but, but that's not my, that's not my right I, I'm not here to, to tell people what they can't build or what they can't. Right. I'm just trying to follow the code. And if right. the code's going to say 100 foot, you know, this is the one stream that, that I, mm -hmm. I actually think it probably should be held to. Kim, do we have um, any of the emails that Kevin Alfini sent that we could review? That's actually what I, I would have liked to have heard because it's I know we have some. I thought that there was an email or two that he commented on I that I saw as I was reviewing. The, see. See I think it was attached to another email, if I'm not mistaken. Why is that? Okay. Email from Scott Harder, maybe. Uh, maybe it was buried in there, or maybe it was buried in the Chris Jensen comments. Or did Sean ever address your questions, John? Uh, we were kind of wondering. No, and that's what, no, because there was some reference in the emails that she sent or yeah. the data she sent that talked about a retaining wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, but, and I wonder and if they ever. That's what, so she never addressed it. And they, she said they couldn't find it. And then when I went down to look at the property, mm -hmm. there were no retaining walls. It right. was just. But there were some stuff, there were things that were approved. And I was trying to, that's why I sent her that email. And then I realized some of it was in the 
yeah, the documents and, from the form. Well, and we did, oh, thank you. and we did approve a garage on that property in this same yeah. zone. It wasn't, there, there was it wasn't something, just the house. There was septic issues there as well, John, yeah. I'm sure. And that was, yeah. you know, it worked. Yeah. Well, let's go back to one of the, the, um, the issues that was, or the uh, possibilities that brought up. Uh, what was the lady's name? Cheryl Linda. Yeah, and she had said, well, you could pivot the house or move it. Uh, and that's always one of the questions we ask. Could you, what could you have done to avoid having the variance? On that piece of property, is that realistic to consider either the house having been put in a different place or a pivot? Well, I think Scott addressed that by yeah. saying that we'd be creating a you know, opening up a pinch point there that's right. kind of used now to create the flow of the water. Re right? read and, I, and I also think that the house, in my opinion, is at the high point now. You know, it's outside of where the water ponds and where the water right. runs through and from. So to relocate the house in a different location would require a whole new grading of the site. It'd be like a wall. Which would be, site. in my opinion, much more of a disturbance than what right. they're talking we, about doing. We can, you know, we just can't guess what, right. what's going to happen. I mean, water's going to be, I mean, who would have said 11 inches of water on in June of, of yeah. you know, 72? But, and, and the chances of that happening again are probably nil. And, and that's not, you know, water's going to go where it's going to go. And I, and I don't disagree with anything they presented as far as trying to mitigate that issue. But I, you know, I've said, I've said my piece. Right? Well, that's, that's actually, and in, in that email, Kevin says, talks about, it's brief, but it's, says, best way for water flow, he's got it, so. That's what it appears to me he's yeah, saying. Is he's saying it's best way to mitigate mm -hmm. the water flow, is what he's saying. Or to manage the water flow. Right. I, I thought he used mitigating that way. Yeah, this is a tough one. It's a big enough parcel. The problem is just, is it, is it wet in there now? Did you see? Is it, I, didn't, I didn't see that it was wet there today. I walked by I a couple through. weeks ago. But. I don't think anything's wet today. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Last <laughs> week, it was not wet. <laughs> yeah. and to that point, I think there's a dirt road that I drove down. Today, yeah. it's a gravel road. Yeah. That I went down there and it was bone dry and didn't look like there were any washouts or anything really? like that. So, um. okay. All right. Did you did everybody get the email? Everybody read it? Did you read it? Okay, so uh we'll wait for Dave to read that and look at them and wait. <laughs> Put the first round. So do you still have you still have questions, right? Then you say you were uncertain about well, what you're I, I feel better than last time. I still think if I soul searching, uh, it's really a, it's a huge uh, 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 variance uh, uh, going from a hundred to uh, uh, what are the uh, uh, sixty to thirty five, right? Sixty five foot variance. That's big. Well, if you get through the five, it, it's tough, but um, that's that's all I'm doing. And, and that she presented, Sarah Linda did, did a good job presenting that, and I don't disagree with her. I think you might, you might. I don't disagree with what John said as far as the character of the neighborhood, because he's absolutely right. As far as it's not that going to be that much difference. It's a beautiful home that's going to be very similar to the ones that are closer to the lake. Very I'm similar just, to the ones that Sarah Linda lives in across the other side of the creek. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. <laughs> no, I, I don't know about the, the quality or the size no, of the I'm, house. I'm, I'm, I'm just as close to the yeah. creek as what is being proposed so here. From, from Actually, even point, further, I think. Isn't hers closer? Might even be closer. Right. The virus is pretty, hers was there 100 years ago. So. So and, it, and, it, and, it's, and it's survived. I and guess. It's, yeah. it's not created... A, from what we know, a detriment to 
the neighborhood or the community surrounding the creek. And this house is going to survive. That I don't think is an issue. The issue becomes is where are we with the cold? If, if, right. and, that's, I hear you. and that's my only point. And maybe maybe the cold's ridiculous. Maybe the only one. Well, I think that what we are responsible for is looking at the code and then identifying whether the variance being requested is an unusual situation. And I think the grading of the land that facilitates the house being in the location that it is best suited for that parcel of land is a unique situation. And I think the owner recognizes that and has gone out of their way to develop a plan that accommodates that. And I think that as a zoning board, that's our responsibility to look and say, did the owner do their due diligence? Did they accommodate for the difficult conditions they're developing against? And I have to say in my mind, they did. And uh, I think they've done a, a really good job. And, you know, I think if there's a, in my mind, a case for us to support a variance, I think this is, in my mind, one, one that meets the test. And, and one of the reasons for variance is, is land features, which doesn't show up in black and white. And we right. know that with elevations and with it. I, when I, I have the, like the devil and angel on either shoulder and going from, you know, that much of a variance is a little troubling for me because I don't think we've done, I, I don't rec recall one uh, that large uh, when you uh, mentioned a stream, but I do agree with everything uh, uh, John said too, that uh, they, these people are going, to, I think they're going to be uh, uh, very good about the environment and doing the best they can because they have a vested interest. Absolutely. And, and uh, uh, but the, it's, it's, are we breaking new ground for something uh, coming up in the future? This is uh, a biggie. And the back to ordinance, what you were saying, John, is the 100 foot, is is that uh, a standard in every case that, that would, would, is necessary or, and again, I, I, I'm not quite sure. All right, here's, here's, here's how we need to look at it. If they were to build a smaller house, let's say they reduce the size and made it within that lot, is that better? Is that is that because they're still going to have to elevate the house? They're still going to have to work, worry about the water flow. They're still going to have to put it in, you know, the best optimal place, even if it was a smaller house. And I, I mean, I think even if they built a smaller house and they had these same circumstances and they went to Kevin or whomever, I mean, I think still the best spot would probably almost be where they are. Right. I mean, I, I think this has nothing to do with the size of the right. house. I agree. The, the lot is big enough to accommodate right. that. But I also think that, you know, one of the problems that, that we constantly run into is right. that we're always trying to make a, a, a place work where maybe it shouldn't be. Yeah, you know, well, that's what I was going to say. Do you tell me you just can't build a house? Is that why? No, and you can't say that either. I mean, right. so if they stay well, within code, kind of where I was going with well, none of my business if they, where they build a house. It's right. like, that's entirely up to the, the landowner. And that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to say. Yeah. Well, I understand. What we're, but I'm just saying, if you look at this lot, do we, I mean, do we say, no, you can't build a house there because, you know, it's not going to work because of the code? Or do we want them to be? In, is this a super majority vote? Probably is. I believe, is, is it a super majority vote? I think so. Um, was it recommended for denial by? Um, to ask. Yeah, we're, we're, who's on here? That, that's a good question. Oh, look at and misspelled variances. Well, I'm with the county. county's going to say no, they say no to everything. That is All right. Well, if the if the county said no to it, then it would. Need Did to you be a, see? Oh, no, there. Yeah, there was point. Point. Did you see Chris's text there? No. It says the parcel home just south of Ananda Park was approved with similar variances. Did we do that? <laughs> Say that again. Chris Jensen said the parcel slash home just south of Ananda was approved with similar variances. So, were there county planning comments? I never saw them. What's that? We could go to the uh, 
the roster and see if there if that was one of the things get everything out there. Sure. What do you want to ask him? Whether it was uh, approved by? No. There's no. Ontario no. County. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Thank you. I was actually looking for Ontario County planning. Oh, well, that's no. different. No. And that's the one that would the obligate a supermajority. Oh, and they said no comment. No comment. That's, that's no public comments, works. huh? Hmm. All right. Well, there we go. So it doesn't have to be a super majority thing. That's a, that's a big deal. Right? We'll, Which we'll, one we'll one find one out one after. <laughs> after <laughs> exactly. Fact. Which one is Chris referring to? I have south of Ananda. So is it the Hammond Riser property? It was a thing. Is he still on? Yeah. Is it? Can we, yes. can we unmute him? Let's do it. Unmute all the Chris's. How's that? <laughs> and we talk at the same time. There we go. Hello, Chris. It, it was 5475 Rochester Point. They did rebuild an existing home, but they're they're five or six feet or so from the stream. Oh, okay. Wow. Wow. All right. they, they they got like I believe five or six variances on that parcel. Wow. When was this? Chris? And I remember that that one had to be built outside of the floodplain if I'm not mistaken. Mm, yes. up. I think you're right. And it was kind of a modern looking home. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that now. But but I the reason I mentioned things before about putting that disclaimer, after he built and obtained all these variances and everything, they keep coming back saying that the town has to modify the stream, clean up the stream, do all this stuff because they're flooding. Uh, I just want to know that something if all the variants are issued, which I, mean, I don't know if you can build a house anywhere else, that they just understand that there will be flooding and ice issues in the future. That is not responsible on the, on the part of the and, and Chris, do you believe that Chris Nadler and the Shotlands attorney can come up with language that works for all of us, don't you? Absolutely. Just put it on the site plan itself before signature. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. So do we still get to vote, even though we don't may not have the language or what do we do? Yeah, yeah sure. Well, right. well, you're saying what the condition is, and the condition yeah. is that um, there's a criminal language and yep. we can have them. All right, I guess let's call it. I would also really like to recommend we add the condition that the, the, the trees that they're not going to cut down now, because the way he said it, he kept saying, um, we, we don't have to take these down. I think we want to add the condition that don't try to keep them. Down. Yeah, try well, to that, keep that, money. That's the plan that was submitted to us and we are voting on, so they have to do that. They can't modify that plan. But the plan that is actually the paperwork shows them still coming down and being left to stop. That's correct. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Her interpretation is correct. Oh, so yeah. you want to go with what the landscape if, architect If it's approved, then we would add that. Then that'll yeah. be a condition. It can just be one yeah, of the conditions. Glad you okay. that. Yeah, good cut. Good job. All right. Once in a while. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, applicant is requesting area variance stream setback of 35 feet from the feet is. Minimum 65 foot variance required. Shall the applicant be granted a 65 foot stream setback variance? John Casey. Yes. Bob Hilliard. Yes. Dave Emery. No. Uh, Kelly Lloyd. Yes. And then Shannon Chevy. Yeah. Yes. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thanks. Appreciate it. We have, uh, Oh, yes, yeah, so I got to give you the condition. Right? Yeah. You guys can uh, chime Oops. in on oh, the okay. or, uh, helping me out. Well, with, with I mean, I now, I, my understanding, are we writing yeah. the conditions? Or? Well, we're going to. So, how are we doing? Very often. Because I'm, I'm not so sure I, that I can be comprehensive. I can throw a couple of things in, but wow. there's so much going on in this one. Is Chris Nadler still around? We'll have Chris chime in. Keep us in line. Two minutes. Okay. So sit. Well, he's not, 
And well, so, was so we'll have Chris, and, you know, and Chris and chime in. I, I try to honor the code more than a lot of people, but John's head of the ordinance committee, and All right. least there's a little. So we'll go to the approval, the reasoning. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. <laughs> We're going to go with the, yeah, the, the granting of the variance is, is it doesn't always address every individual. I don't think, do we want to put, it won't change because it should I'm, be similar. I, I think we should need Shauna and, and uh, Chris in on this. I think this one's a. a well, yeah, we'll too. add the we'll chat. I'm, oh, you I'm, mean I'm just giving the facts. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Sorry. All right. Well, anyway, so the I think the uniqueness of the parcel itself yes. is um, the main reason for um, our approval of where the, the house is located. The applicants also did their due diligence with checking with Kevin O'Baney and uh, neighbors with the property regarding, uh, you know, approval of the project and, and the neighbors were mostly in favor other than one or two. But I think Kevin O'Baney also helped uh, alleviate some of the issues we had, we were concerned about with water flow. Um, I think you ought to talk about the engineer uh, modifying the drawings to accommodate our concerns about water flow and the impact to neighbors. There you go. What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> what he said. You got that? Or, uh, what did you say? I'm sorry. Was, oh, geez, now you want me to remember, I know, right? repeat it's, it? It sounded so good the first time. So. I think that the engineers addressed our concerns relative to the flow of or the water runoff not impacting the neighbors. Right. The variance is, is actually substantial, but when working with the applicant, um, there was really not a lot of uh, a lot of other options for that person. I don't know if you want to address the Shannon's issue with the plans is not just submitted, but Right. So the tree, one of the things that, like you're talking about the trees, yeah. the plantings, um, we're not re not to remove the, that's the five out of the right. six. Yeah. That's going to. Seems like that. I think one had to go. Oh, the, the one up at the top. So the there were the, top had to the go. five identified trees that were, uh, that that were going to be left as stumps will be left as okay. um, trees. <laughs> Well, the the, the tree the building no, will be there longer than the trees. Right. right. Um, let's see, what else? The whole one. The trees are a lot. The rear setback can also be. Uh, the neighbor is also making efforts to put in environmentally friendly um, grass seeds and mixture of plantings to well, reason. filter, yeah, filter the water flow, which will make its way into the lake. They're replacing, yeah, with native species. Of, yeah. Um, reducing the the invasive species and putting in that was a mix of seed or something. Like that. <laughs> and I think last and not maybe not least, but um, I think we should talk about what was the what we're going to add on. What was what were we going to add on? Well, the biggest thing was the fact that they have to come to agreeable language on the owner accepting existing flooding condition? Yes. It's a condition, right? Um, is it a condition or is it a... That is a condition. It is a condition? Okay. I guess it's a condition. Yeah, benefits of the applicant. This is kind of pretty much all that. No place to put it. All right. Did I miss anything? What do you guys think? I, I still like uh, having we can, you know, them, uh, you know, maybe polish it up a little bit. Yeah. I, I think that's the uh, nuts and bolts. Yeah. I think the town wants to not be uh, uh, held liable if uh, 
there was an event. I think that's what Chris uh, oh, yeah, yeah. said. Yeah, so from, you know, I mean, the neighbor has to understand this is a flood, this is a potential flooding area, and that it's not a responsibility of the town to be reinforcing walls. Or, what's that? That would be the neighbor. What did I say? That's the neighbor? You did, but that's. You all knew what you were trying to say. So. Right. Yeah, you knew. I was reading and talking, it's never a good thing. So. Chris will go over all of the things. I'm sorry. Okay, so we want that in working. And that goes with the process. All right, anything else? What, what, I, what I missed? You want your normal conditions? Yes. Which actually, I, he didn't give me that sheet. This is all in San Diego. I was going to say, there's, there's yeah, like, yeah, I asked him for those. You know, he didn't give, he said he was going to have, have them there. I think it's one year. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, it has to be as planned submitted, right? It has to be the plans that were submitted have to be done. The variance has to be, it's, it goes one year. What is getting all? I think it's it goes along with the documents, isn't it? Yeah, it's the as depicted in the descriptions and drawings provided no. at the July 18th, 19th meeting. We how much the link is coming down. Received on, um, I don't know what day you received them. Oh, what, what day did you receive? Days. Yeah, <laughs> multiple <laughs> one, right? <laughs> Looks <laughs> like the last one was the. So in the upper 70s. Yeah. But I mean, to me, it would seem like the idea of circumstance to on the lake and have a spurs. It's just going to be on the lake. Yeah. 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 So, All right. Yeah, I can't remember what the date was. Yeah. Okay. All right. If I think of anything, I'll let you know. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Why don't we address uh, the artists and meet so that we yeah. can? Oh, yeah. Mr. Yeah, we can do that. All righty. Good night. Good night. Okay, we're gonna call it for yeah. Our... Any discussion on any discussion? Sure. On our... No, no, I don't think so. I think it's a <laughs> perfect reason for a variance. Well, and we already gave them the one, just that we didn't execute it within the twelve months. So. Well, that one is the character of the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I know. I was gonna say right. right. And it is a benefit to the community. Yeah. Exactly, and I don't think it was self-created. Nobody's maybe yeah. maybe. Be, you sell it to your success. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't see any issue with this, this one. I mean, obviously. So creative. You're too yeah. Everybody good? Let's call it. All right. Oh, okay. The sales um, going reach the conclusion. Absolutely. You're going to yeah. call it each variance? Yeah. 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 Individually? No, we'll do that. Okay. Applicant is requesting area variance side setback of 52 feet from 80 feet is required. A 28 foot side setback variance required. The applicant is also requesting area variance rear setback of five foot when 50 feet is required. A 45 foot rear setback variance required. So you're reading them as I'll, I'll, combined? Oh, no. I'll, okay. I just read the, the okay. top part, so yep. I'll do the, the roll for each one. Okay. Shall the applicant be granted a 28 foot? Side setback area variance. John Casey. Yes. Uh, Bob Hilliard. Yes. Dave Henry. Yes. Hilly the Boy. Yes. Shannon Chevier. Yes. Uh, shall the applicant be granted a 45 foot rear setback? Bob Casey. Or John Casey. Yes. Uh, Bob Hilliard. Yes. Dave Henry. Yes. Hilly the Boy. Yes. Shannon Chevier. Yes. We're done. All right, so 
We start off with the as depicted in the description design. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Um, the applicant, um, I believe that the variance that was within the character of the neighborhood. Um, there was a previous variance that was already granted that was past the 12 month mark. Re granted again. Um, there's an easy it yeah. won't have an adverse effect on the property or neighboring property. What's the uh, what is the zoning uh designation? It was industrial, they were trying to, keep yeah. What do they call that in the, on the map? You can't remember, <laughs> but I mean, in that in that uh, zoning uh, district, this is uh totally appropriate. You're talking about ag, the no, it's no, industrial. Just, just industrial. Just no, 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 no. I'm not sure it's best for time. Um, I, I think another condition is the fact that there's an easement running adjacent yes. to the property line. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. They, and no one always says. Yeah, we don't have to worry about. So the one setback was. Uh, <laughs> the one setback was close on the one side, right? What was it? Was, that was on the north, north side of the property. Yeah. The easement on that easement? side of the property yeah. will prevent anybody from creates uh, buffer, creates yeah. separation. As I say, from building close from that that lot line. I always feel sorry when I see some sort of things like this. I, 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 I was just, just trying to see. Yeah, there's a nightmare what they've said that south loading dock. Right. Honestly, I don't think that's, that's where all my questions were. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not part of the nope. <laughs> like trees. Ready to move on to the other one? Yeah, I don't think there's really much more we can add to this one. Just normal conditions? Normal conditions, yeah. 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 All right. I don't, I don't see a big issue with that. All right, who else is up? So the wiser one we moved, right? Scott Hill. Yeah, John, it's good thing you Hill. said something. They didn't have a good scan report on how we operate here. Yeah. They were, they were, I cruise, was actually, yeah, prison for prison. I was glad that you brought that up because I was going to say something, you know, like you may want to, I mean, just, yeah. I, mean, I didn't want to say we're, we're going to deny it, but I mean, like, yeah, I wanted to go no, I'm glad it. you didn't. Yeah, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, Shauna usually. I didn't want to make it sound maybe, like they they maybe they didn't do the extra step of coming in and working with her. Uh, well, they like said they, people. I thought they said they did. Or did they? Okay. Yeah, they yeah. said they talked to her, but I, I agree with you. When, yeah. you, when you call Shauna, come in, she kind of wants to yeah. read rates of everything for yeah. you. Yeah. Right. That's we'll not the Scott, Scott Hill. Hill. Yeah, so let's go to Scott Hill now. Um, what do you guys think? What's your, what's your take on this? Can I ask what a patent is and how that has anything to do with? Anything? I actually was kind of wondering what that was myself. Uh, I go to just patent lock. I, I was going to ask if it's spelled the same. As yeah, right. I mean, that was a new one. I got to say, Chris, Chris Jensen. Any Chris Jensen? <laughs> I'd never heard of me. Chris, I'm making no comment. No comment. What do you mean, no comment? Do you know what a patent is? Office. The Office of General Services owns the lake, not us. So what the heck is a patent, though? I do not know. <laughs> and, and I don't know if it really had any relevance. It, I, I mean, that's does. why I didn't ask in through the whole thing is that I don't think that changes anything here. All right. That's true. No, well, not as far as lot coverage or building coverage. All right. Thanks. All right. So anyway, Nobody has any objections, or what, what's your what's your thought process? I mean, I, I think he's putting it in a place where it's the best compromise. Well, right? and where he's minimizing the impact to the slope, but yet trying to get the building off the road. Yeah, as I was just going to say, he's disturbing less. It, just like Chris said, it was a balancing act, right? Yeah, I mean, if yeah, you push exactly. house back, you're digging more into the hill and I you're think disturbing that was, more soil. That's what stuck with me: the balancing yeah. act that Chris mentioned. And my concerns were all the execution kind yeah, of issue. That's but, be a mess you know, that's there. concerned, you know, if the highway department <laughs> addressed it great. I'm already rerouting that in my mind. I'm gonna have to go to <laughs> Little Cheshire. <laughs> it might affect the needle. 
Yeah, all right. For for a couple months. Very self improvement. All right. I mean, nobody else. Nobody has any concerns. No. There seems to be a lot of other garages like that built in yeah. the on that side. So. Yeah, it's not. It's definitely. All right. I guess we call it. All right. Applicant is requesting area variance front setback of 40 feet and 60 feet is the minimum. 20 foot, 20 foot front setback variance required. Applicant is also seeking relief from Chapter 228D, 1 through 3, which prohibits accessory structures that require greater than 4,000 square feet of land disturbance when the applicant is proposing 77. 100 square feet of area disturbance within the state steep slope protection. First one. Shall the applicant be granted a 20 foot front setback area variance? John Casey? Yes. Bob Hilly? Yes. Dave Emery? Yes. Hilly LeBoy? Yes. Shannon Shivian? Yes. Shall the applicant be granted relief from Chapter 228D1B3? Yes. Bob Hillary. Yes. Dave Emery. Yes. Helen Drew. Yes. Shannon Shavie. Yes. Oh wait. Did we see these this chat over here, by the way? Oh, that's the word yeah, you have for the shop. So is it the, I think you said something about the language in there though. Maybe we can add that in. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, that's what I, I figured yeah. out. Better. I mean, that is punchy, but it's uh, some of the other people. Right. Oh, God, God, I know. I'm exhausted. I need a shower. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'll let you do that first. And then I'll. <laughs> After Any excuse me. Okay, any other board? You want me to close it? Uh, well, we here. have to approve the meeting minutes. I yes, think. anybody look at the minutes? The meeting minutes. By the way. Did you? I just yeah. briefed them quickly. Yeah, I, did. I did too. I have, uh, so nobody saw any red lights. No, no. So we approve. I'll make a motion to approve. All right, Second. John. Perfect. Bob. All right, I'll write it down in case you're. In See you all later, Anna. Take care, John. All righty, John. <laughs> And I'll read off. Cut out again. <laughs> it's got a hot date. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. You'll be much better on the town board. <laughs> you won't have to see me at all. I was going to say the opposite. I was going to say, get rid of me. Oh, there you go. I guess. Well, you'll be voting me out. That's all. <laughs> so. I say it. All right, so let's see. Where were we? Voting on the minutes. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, voting on the minutes. Well, yeah, we did. All we did. We voted on the minutes I'm while you sorry. were. That's all right. Uh, John. Uh, John. I second. And yeah, and Bob. All right. Now we'll go back to the decision. All right. So this is for the Hill application. Uh, Obviously, as depicted by the, I don't know if I'm going to read it every time, it's the number one reason the, the plan submitted. Uh oh, oh. That could be a common. Yep. All right. Okay. Uh, the applicant uh, demonstrated, um, I don't know, I'll well, never, never re retract that one. We believe that this granting the variance was within keeping the keeping character, within of, the the character of the neighborhood. We don't believe that it will change the character of the neighborhood and um, impact the other properties, the neighboring properties. Uh, let's see. The garage is probably a, an optimal location from soil disturbance. We don't pushing that further back. And the view from the lake. Would, yeah, pushing it further back would, would actually impact soil disturbance. And what Dave said, there's no impact to the lake, no view impact. Uh, and what else? They address the drainage issues. Oh, yeah. 
come down to the point. Yeah, they did actually. And the reinforcement he said on the wall would actually be a good thing, you know, holding the. Uh, Is it a wall though? I thought it was just stone. Wasn't it just no, stone? It's a cement wall with rebar with stone yeah, behind it. Right. Stone, but it was gonna it wasn't gonna be like a solid stone, right? I mean, that's yeah. with, with drainage stone behind right. it with the right. pressure right. under number two. Wash stone, that question. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, there's potential to improve the drainage in that area. Uh, I think, I don't know, I can't think of anything else. My brain's trying to think about it. Yes, it has been. Other than that. Good. Does that work? Everybody good? For a minute. We, we approved the we minutes. Did the, yeah, we did that. We skipped ahead. No. So, other than that, so uh, do we want to move to close call the meeting? Meeting adjourned? Meeting yeah, adjourned. All right. After you turn that off, I have one comment. Okay, turn it Bye. Bye. See you. Bye, guys.